I am so tired. My legs are screaming. They're just heavy and tired. But that was the purpose of today's session. Medium session Saturday, some track work, some speed work. Not a super hard session, but a solid session. Come back on the Sunday when the legs are tired, the glycogen's depleted, and do another session. On the Richmond Hills, where it's tough, it's hard, there's traffic, there's people, there's dogs. Hills are tough but it was a good day. Watch the video, check out what I did. Okay guys, so I've came to Richmond Park. Today's like a, it's like a medium threshold day where it's not hard, but the reason I came to Richmond Park is A, for a change of scenery, and B, I can probably actually show you like, I was looking for these. These big ugly things are called hills. Beautiful thing about hills is you get to go a bit slower, it builds some leg strength, but it also gives you the benefits of the session while slowing things down. I'm trying to encourage you don't have to go super fast all the time. Sometimes slowing it down takes less out of the body, but you can still get the same benefits. You can go to a treadmill, you can put it on an incline, and you can crack on with your training and get a better, um, better strength in the legs, better um, bang for your buck, because you're taking less out of your body, but you're getting the same benefits. Let's run off some hills. All right, so let's talk through what's happening today. Like I said, this is the kind of session that you can do once every now and again. You don't want to do a session like this all the time because of course, if you're loading up, even if it's two medium days, back to back, there is an element of fatigue and it can tire the body out. What that means is in a 10 to 12 week buildup, you don't want to do this every weekend, for example but you can do it every now and again. Remember that how training works is you push the body, and when you push the body, it has to recover, and then when it recovers, you get stronger, you get better, you get faster, you get fitter. All those good things, but only if you're keeping a balance in terms of, am I recovering, to allow those adaptations to take place. And so a session like today, you've gone yesterday, you've done a bit of a session, the specifics aren't that important, so long as it's not a super hard day. What I mean by super hard, hard can either be that perhaps you were supposed to do a threshold session, tempo session, but maybe you pushed it too hard, then you cannot possibly come back the next day and do a session. That's where discipline is so important. And so my session yesterday was the 200s at speed and then the 1K active rest. I did that with Jack. Jack was doing some 200s on his easy week, but we rattled through some speed work, you could say, but it's not super taxing on the body. Why it's not super taxing on the body is because it's only actually 1200 meters, which is six times 200 at a quicker pace, and the rest is very manageable. So the total load and the total impact and how much recovery time you would need after a session like that is quite minimal, which means you can come back the next day and do a more medium to steady type threshold, not a hard threshold, not a up-tempo type session, not an interval session, just a steady threshold rather than thinking every day needs to be easy recovery. And so today I go out there, I went to Richmond Park because it's basically it's just got hills. I know that it's got other kind of, I'm gonna call it obstacles, but it's not. But if you're throwing in other elements like wind, hills, it's kind of beautiful in a way because if you can get over the fact that your GPS will be slower and if you can get over the fact that you won't be running at your fastest pace ever for that kind of session, it's actually beautiful for the body because the body doesn't have to run as fast to get similar benefits. And so you get to slow it down, but you basically get the same, um, 
So you get to slow it down, but you basically get the same benefits that you perhaps otherwise would have got, but you might have had to go quicker if you went through a really fast road loop. I think we've became a little bit obsessed with speed and not disciplined with what am I trying to achieve out of today's session. And so it was four times 3K on tired legs. Like I said, yesterday you've done that bit of a session. Yesterday was a 17 mile day. It was a session in the morning, gym in the afternoon, run that night. You're going into Sunday pretty tired, but it's good to get out there and do some training, perhaps on depleted muscles, tired body, tired mind. I think it's super good for the focus. What's also very interesting is that's the first warm down you could call it. So it's 4K easy warm up, 4K easy warm down. When I'm doing that 4K easy warm down, it's the first time where I've thought, wow, I'm pretty tired. And that's what I wanted. Like I said, you can't do this all the time, but what I wanted out of today's session was to break that body down a little bit, and sometimes you get what's then called super compensation. Super compensation is when the body has been overstressed a little bit. Maybe you've been doing everything really sensibly, maybe you've been doing everything super careful, and so every now and again, you hit it with something a little bit harder, two days in a row, maybe a double day, and all of a sudden you're asking it to recover from something a bit harder and sometimes you'll get a fitness benefit because of that. Not every time, not everything we do is going to work. You hope it is, I really hope it does and it's helped me in the past. I've noticed that when I've done stuff like this in the past there's been a big return but remember sometimes with running it's just experimenting what might work for your body. Don't take it so personal if it doesn't pay off and you don't feel amazing in two weeks time. At least you were willing to try something. So today, nothing crazy, four times 3K with 30 seconds rest. It's, it's basically just a seven or eight mile run with little bits of rest up and down the hills, using the terrain to get the sort of heart rate up and get the lactate where it needed to be. And it went really well. The park was busy. But my advice would be if you're gonna do a session like that today, you're taking pressure off pace, but that also takes that pressure off the psychology. And so when I'm out there, I don't mind if people are in the way. I don't mind if dogs are getting in the way, cyclists, cars. I don't mind if I even have to stop, let traffic go past, pause my watch, go again. It's okay sometimes to not be so aggressive and so like on it. Sometimes it's okay to just go to the park, get a session done, go home, drink your recovery shake and move on. But the session went well. I'm not 100% sure about the paces, maybe because I was tired they were just a bit slower today and I have no problem with that. My only concern is that I do know that stride foot pod can often take over pace and it didn't seem like the stride foot pod was working today because the par numbers were just way too high for that kind of an effort. Like, I won't go into par today because that's not what this is about, but way too high. And so stride definitely wasn't working, but I don't know then if that was taking over pace. I can't really be sure. It doesn't matter. I said in the warm up that it doesn't matter about pace today. It was about getting a full lap of Richmond Park and a little bit more into the body, into the legs, strength from the hills, get that lactate where it needs to be, which I did perfectly, 1.5. And what a great day. It now means that I can get that box ticked and it might be three weeks before I even think about doing something like that. I won't do this every 10 to 12 day cycle, but in some of the cycles, and especially when you start the marathon block of training, you're looking to do a session, perhaps Wednesday or perhaps Friday, you do that session, it'll deplete some of your glycogen, and then you go into the next day a little bit tired, and your body gets used to having to perform, the brain gets used to having to perform when you're a little bit tired. In a way, it is absolutely absolutely golden for kind of race practice. But you have to accept that pace is not going to be where it normally is. And you've done that on purpose. That's a That was a choice. That was a choice to go in a little bit tired, 
and do this kind of session a little bit slower. Same benefits, but a bit slower. So it's taking less out of the body from that physical perspective of the pounding, but you're getting a brilliant benefit. Work some of the uphills. Don't be afraid to push it a little bit, but then back off. It was a great session. I love Richmond Park. It's absolutely beautiful. And let me show you the rest of the reps. Okay, so hopefully you just saw that the lactate was 1.9, which is fine. After rep 2, it was 1.5, and then it was 1.9. I'm about to go to Portugal today, which is why that's kind of like two sessions in a row. So I did a bit of a session Saturday, a bit of a session Sunday. Saturday wasn't super tough, and today, obviously, like changing the terrain, having the hills, it made it a bit easier on the body. I did try to connect a stride foot pod, and... I kind of wish I didn't because then it meant that like my GPS wasn't working so I kept getting like it kept saying reconnecting reconnecting and I have a feeling that my GPS or my speed was using the stride foot pod and I also know that the stride foot pod was like way off because if you're doing like threshold work like that for me my par would normally be like if you're into par you know anything about it, it would normally be like 340 to 350 maybe like 360 but it was saying like 450 so it was a bit frustrating that i didn't have pace but at least i had heart rate which you know that's fine and so some days i literally said at the start of this session that the the purpose was to be slower not worry about pace but just get the effort done and i actually really enjoyed that for once it was kind of quite nice like going up and down hills and like no care in the world about pace because well it wasn't working so it kind of didn't matter um but look job done that, that was a great day like like i said it's it's really useful and good to incorporate some hills into what you're doing both from a leg strength perspective and because you get to slow it down a bit but get all the same benefits the reason i doubled up sessions is because sometimes it's good to do a bit of a session when you're a bit tired and so i'll maybe get a little you can't do it all the time but it's good to go into some sessions a bit tired almost fatigued from the day before glycogen a bit low from the day before but also i know with portugal and this under armor event i might not have heaps of time and so i wanted to maximize the time that i had before travel hope you enjoyed the video like subscribe do all those lovely things thanks so much for watching guys thank you so much for joining me so far do me a favor and go and check out all the tips, courses, running advice at joggingroom.com. 60 hours worth of tips, 60 hours worth of training routines, recovery techniques, better sleep, better nutrition, better gym. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. If you want to take your running to that next level, that's a great place to start. There's a marathon plan, a 10K plan. The Run and Masterclass is undoubtedly the best resource online for better running tips. Perhaps if your race results haven't been moving forward, check that out, you will not be disappointed. How to train, when to train, and how to do it the right way to get the most benefits.